What's up, Jokers? All right, this time I have my Jessica Havoc build that I used at Fall Highlander Games' Fall Brawl most recently, and I got eighth place. We made top eight out of 33. We didn't win, things happened. But considering that I decided to use her when I was filling out my um, deck list right before the tournament started, we did a lot better than I expected. So let's, let's talk about the deck a little bit. Jessica Havoc, I did a video on her and what her everything that she's about. I'll put that in the description if you want to read that or watch that rather. So for the entrance card, I went with Guest Valley Chaos because I was suffering from a lot of like just not getting cards and consistency issues and Chaos helped a lot because um, I've been testing this deck since, you know, they since they revealed that, you know, it existed. So it's, it's been a while and uh, we went with Chaos and uh did a job when i needed to dig for stuff it was just totally extremely clutch it was fabulous kurt you know it was great also shout out to uh chuckonomics and kevin fouché i talked to them a lot about regarding this build and um some stuff and the you know their your tips helped a lot it got us top eight so thank you again um let me i want to just double back on her just to go back on her finishes right crab catastrophe is way better than I probably initially thought because I think I think in that first video I was like oh death machine tombstone is gonna be amazing and um, total havoc is definitely a solid card uh, if they stop it they have to discard it it's great but crab catastrophe is just like man this, this card crab catastrophe finish submission it's not even the stats right because you get a seven you get a seven technique and you get a your eight becomes a ten so you have a ten ten nine right but your opponent's agility is minus two. This like you just shoot down every agility ten character in the game, because if their agility is ten <laughs> and you roll a nine, how are they breaking out? Crab catastrophe, not specifically for that reason alone, but crab catastrophe helped me out so much in the event. I got most of my. I'm pretty sure I got most of my wins from crab catastrophe. <laughs> All right, I just go on to the deck, right? So for one to three, I just went with the uh, I just went with the same line so I get some stat boost and try to get some turns. Uh, plus one to my seven, plus one to my nine, and plus one to my eight. It's a lot of uh, pluses to my submission in this build, and um, it, they they weren't game breaking, but they helped me when they needed to. So it was it was fine. And then for four to six, I went with Cosmic Collection because like I said, she doesn't have a lot of. Um, like draw power and consistency so i wanted to at least have one in this line that lets me get an extra card right and then i also get to see what's in their hand so that is not too far off from my control style i was trying to go for so you know it was there was that i went with rejected so that i can just get cards back because there's a lot of times you just play cards and then you're like all right well, how am i gonna get that back oh i'll just reject it back into my deck and I could use other things to add for my hand and things like that, but there's reason, other reasons why I use Rejected, which I'll get to when we get to that line. But um, we also had uh, Ring of Fire in the top four, so I figured I'll just take a Rejected just in case. Um, I don't know if I will keep it after, you know, now that that event's over, but we shall see. Uh, Derailed, again, it was mostly for consistency. Um, there's a lot of times where like I remember at least twice where I had a really good hand. I'm like, man, I, I guess I'm gonna let that follow up land. <laughs> guess I'm gonna let that follow up hit. But uh, it, it helped both uh, aggressively and defensively as far as um, just cycling different cards. So it, it was a, it was a good call. Okay, so 79 um, was a little bit experimental because um, going into the event, I know we had Soul Cage and we had Ring of Fire. And um, the other cards didn't necessarily um, fit with the vision that I wanted for the build, right? Um, so I, I went with Belly to Belly Suplex at 8, uh, mostly because if in still cage match, I got to flip 2, right? So just to give me some more speed in, in general, uh, I can flip 2. And if I need something outside of still cage, I can just get it back, right? But also because you can just go lead and then get a follow up back outside of Steel Cage and then you're prepped to run your, your drop your finisher. So, you know, that that was always that was pretty clutch. But what was really clutch was surprisingly elbow smash. 
So you could bury two cards in any player's discard pile or look at their hand. So outside of Steel Cage, I can control your discard a little bit or look at your hand so that I know what card I want to play or what cards I can play. So that worked out really well in my favor because like I said, I was looking, doing a little bit control here. So it worked out. Now uh, 10 to 12, uh, I use two of the, if your opponent has a stop and play, your next turn roll is plus two. Um, just worked out, punish, punish them for playing stop, so is what I had in mind. So there you go, you play the stop, all right now this is a one card giving me plus two next turn. Taunting Sheep, um, I just personally like the minus one to your, your opponent's turn roll, uh, especially with a lot of, I didn't know how many people were going to play Jay White, so it stops them from stealing a turn. Like any of those reroll characters when you roll high, all right, well, you can't reroll now because uh, you're minus one. Jay White can't steal your 10 if he's if his, if his 10 is a 9. So that, uh, And just personally, if I had to pick, that's that's what I uh, always go for. Now, we couldn't use Ikuzo, Ikuzo cards in at Highlander. So instead, I was running... Um, I was just running the regular side powers. I can't remember the name right now because I'm not looking at it. <laughs> The regular, if my power is greater, I can stop your grapple, your submission. That's what I was running. Because that's all you can run when you're Jessica Havoc and you don't run Colossal Smash. So, aside from that Spinning Hill Kick, um, again, this was for Ring of Fire. I did not play this at all in the Steel Cage match. I just discarded it. So this is Ring of Fire. I got to flip, and if I wanted to, I could, you know, bury something. I could give them something back to make them flip something else. Um, also, it was more uh, discard uh manipulation so i could discard your stops and if i wanted to i can put them back so i can keep my gimmick going uh cross arm chicken wing this card was so clutch like the one big recursion card that i run in here uh you take one card from discard pot add to your hand plus to your next turn roll i can't tell you how many times i went from cross arm i went cross arm chicken wing into press slam and like that was pretty much game like it, was, it gets ridiculous after a while or oh, i'm sorry press slam into cross arm chicken wing because they can't stop it. But like, it, it was kind of crazy. It was wild, right? Face danger head on. 16 line. Um, like A lot of this was experimental because I didn't know what was going to work. Face agent head on. If you have another strike and play, shuffle two from your discard pile into your deck. If this is Ring of Fire, shuffle four instead. So this is mostly for Ring of Fire or outside of Steel Cage if I really needed to you know, shuffle some stuff back. And this is also... Um, I'm, I'm gonna get to that, that other card later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Slingshot Suplex at 17, just to give me plus two, because I figured, hey, I'm gonna have some follow ups in place. I'm gonna get plus two in my turn roll. Uh, Super Angle Crab, uh, I really liked um, because it gives me plus one to my submission, so it's a nine. And then with uh, Clutch onto a point, I'm rolling tens. And then with my finished submission, uh, my eight becomes an 11. So this is just worked out just a lot in my favor um throughout the day it's a it's a great card in general but you know if you're if your sub is eight nine plus you know might as well drop it if you got it right all right here we go i was getting ahead of myself dragon for 19 to 21 right we ran dragon gate crash and uh american dragon leg lock at uh, 19 and 21 uh more stops so like i said we don't have the speed or the draw power so it lets me get a card and I get to see what my opponent has in their hand, so it just was on theme. I think uh, if I ran more stops, it'll all be the Steel Cage stops. Because on top of that, in Steel Cage, I would have got the added bonus of, you know, flipping if I if I needed to. Um, 20, we were running Press Slam. It's currently not in because, as you can see, Colossal Smash is in. I had to cut something, okay? So Press Slam uh, was was our 20 at the at the event because we didn't have Colossal Smash. Um, look at your opponent's hand, bury all submissions, and you might think it's kind of productive for Total Havoc, but I'd rather just hit a free Total Havoc than risk them doing a stop just to get a discard, you know? And, uh, buries all their submissions. I also get to look in their hand, so I could just play another anything else. So this actually was, like, super, super good, too, this weekend. Or this past weekend. This is a line I was- I wanted to get to so bad. Standing Moonsault and Death Valley Driver, so I can search for whatever finish I needed, add it to my hand. The maximum hand size didn't really ever come into play, or um, I probably still cage it was uh, relevant, but other than that, it really wasn't. This was specifically just to find finishers, and that was with Derailed and all these shuffle cards, just so I can always have these live enough to find a finish for my deck. 
Inferno Claw, shuffle up the four cards from your discard pile into your deck. Your opponent discards one of card from their hand. If this is Ring of Fire or Lumberjack, double these numbers. So you're looking at shuffling four back now, uh, pretty much at the cost of nothing. You know, I don't need another card in play, like anything like that. I can just shuffle four back and my opponent discards one from their hand. Um, and then on top of that, if it's Ring of Fire, because we had Ring of Fire stiff lined up, it's shuffle eight and your, your opponent discards one, uh, two. So I was like, all right, this seems like a good pick. Also, so I can just keep recurring cards, putting back in my deck, a standing moonsault and a DVD to get them back. So, you know, that that worked out actually really well for me. And then for the uh, 25 to 27 stops, uh, I just went with the, uh, like I said, we needed to withdraw more cards, right? So I just went Pele Kick and Sunset Flip. So if I dropped, if I needed to stop a lead or a submission, I could just draw a card. And, um, it, these, these did, they did the job. They did what they were supposed to do. Shoulder Snap, um, just one recursion, stop and finish strike. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the deck. It worked out, uh, way better than I expected it to. Uh, we made top eight, so I guess I can't complain, right? And, um... I mean that that's about it you know that's just havoc i don't know if i'm going to keep playing her but this is the current build uh we might expand on it now that we have colossal smash and we can run that possibly in the next event i'm looking forward to at least checking it out before i move on to some other things but thank y'all for coming out to this video hopefully maybe it'll help somebody else trying to build jessica havoc or um just to get some insight on how i make decks or with, with the help of the community of course <laughs> I don't think it would have done as well if I didn't reach out, but you know, I appreciate y'all, Jokers, and uh, until next video, I will, I will catch y'all later.